Uh, good, strong team providing good, strong, committed leadership. To the elected officials who are here tonight, I cannot begin to express to you how important you are. I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am that you do what you do. And the level of commitment that you bring uh, in some very difficult times is astounding. And so we honor you and salute you, members of the legislature, the House, and the Senate, for your leadership. And I'd ask you all, elected officials, to stand at the legislative level so that we can thank you for getting us through this last session with a budget that's sound and principled in supporting the governor and the team um, across the state. So if you would, just I, the lights are whatever they are, but just stand up so we can applaud you and thank the elected officials from the state of Indiana. Thank you guys very much. Actually, leave the lights up for a moment. The, the Attorney General's here. Where's the Attorney General? Where's that? I saw. Okay, say something legal. Where are you? Have they, <laughs> there's the Attorney General, Greg Zeller. Good to see you. Treasurer Richard Murdoch. Where's the Treasurer? I saw the Treasurer a little bit earlier. Treasurer, nice to see you, sir. Superintendent for Public Instruction, Tony Bennett. Where's Tony? I love your music, man. Love it. Love it. You got a new album coming out or anything? I, I didn't know you did education too, but I love it, man. That's, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Uh, Tim Berry, the state auditor. Okay, everybody get it right because the auditor's in the house. And of course, the Senate president, uh, the Honorable David Long. Mr. President, where are you, David? He's here somewhere. And then, of course, my friend, Governor Gilmore. Um, in Maryland, for 40 years before Ehrlich and Steele were elected, there were no Republican governors. And there was very little Republican leadership. Uh, our state assembly struggled, and a young woman named Ellen Sarabray was fighting the odds to try to make a difference and ran for a valiant race for governor in 94, which was stolen from her, and then again in 98. And during that time, um, shortly after those races, uh, Governor Gilmore got elected in Virginia. It was 97. And uh, he was such a breath of fresh air for us in Maryland uh, that we made him our honorary governor um, because he, he, again, brought uh, to the region a steady hand, a principled vision, uh, and it was just a real pleasure to know that he was there to help us. And I, I really um, commend him and thank him because when I became chairman just three years after his election, um, he, uh, when I joined the National Committee, uh, saw, I guess saw something and asked me to serve on the Executive Committee of the RNC. And it was a very significant moment uh, because uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first African-American to serve on the executive committee of the RNC. And his leadership and vision um, was just profound and I think started a chain of events that has been building continually for the party since then in terms of its efforts uh, to broaden its, its touch and its reach. So Governor Gilmore, in a very personal way, is, is special to me and um, one of those individuals who was there for the party um, when he didn't have to be. He had other things certainly to do and other commitments that were as important, but he stayed true and he stayed dedicated. And Governor, thank you so much for your leadership and your friendship. And it's an honor to, and a real surprise to have you here tonight. So it's nice to see you. I just, I don't want to keep folks late, but I got a lot to say. And I, I'm going to get through it because I think it's important to be said. And I think it's important for you to understand where we are right now and where we're going. And, and why it's so important that you wake up and pay attention. And that you focus on the fact that our country is being taken bit by bit apart. And is being reassembled into something that we will not recognize. That we will not know. 
23 years ago, on a night very much like this, I went to my first Lincoln dinner in Prince George's County. And at that dinner, I walked in, met the chairman, and no one spoke to me much for the rest of the evening, except the guest speaker, who was the Honorable Elizabeth Dole. And so Elizabeth saw what was going on, that here was this tall, lanky guy in the room, and it's not like you couldn't notice me. I had hair then. <laughs> and I'm there, and I'm trying to meet people, but it's like a fit and start, and it's, it's really kind of chilly, to be polite. And, and Mrs. Dole saw it, so what she did, I'll never forget her for this, and I love her every day for it. She asked me to come up to see her real quick, and I came up, and, and she started sort of, you know, innocuous conversation. And so they had formed this kind of receiving line with the chairman, the chairman's wife, Elizabeth, and so I wound up like here. And so Elizabeth was talking, and she's like, oh, da, 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 and someone came along, and, and it's, oh, nice to meet you. Oh, have you met Michael Steele? And she introduced me to everyone in the room. Everyone in the room. And I never forgot that. And what it meant to me, particularly afterwards, because when I went back and I told my friends what had happened, they said two things. One, get out. <laughs> I told you the Republican Party does not like black people. <laughs> get out. And I thought about that. I thought long and hard. By that point, I'd been a Republican for about 10 years because I joined the party when I was 17. And I thought, thought very long and hard about it. And I said I could do one of two things. I could either A, get out, wipe my feet of the dust of this party and move on, stand outside and finger point at it, name call against it, blame it for everything under the sun. Or B, I could really tick people off and get involved. Guess which one I decided to do. <laughs> Tonight, I would like every teenage Republican, young Republican, and college Republican in this room to stand up. If you are a teenage Republican, a college Republican, or a young Republican, stand up. Stay standing. Side, that, 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 that. Stay standing. Stay standing. All right, some of the gentlemen sit down, you older folks, okay? But <laughs> the teenage Republicans, college Republicans, young Republicans, stay standing for just a moment. And the folks who have their backs to them, turn around and face them, please, just a moment. Because I don't want you to look at your future, because they are not the future of this party. They are the right here and the right now. And your charge, your responsibility, whether you're a donor, whether you're an activist, whether you're a thinker, whether you're a planner, whatever way and in whichever way you are involved in this party, you have a responsibility to engage these young people. To give them the opportunity to demonstrate their talent, the gift that God has given them to lead, the ability to reach out and bring fresh approaches and new ideas to this party. They blog, they communicate, they YouTube, they MySpace, they MyFace, they do this, they do that, and you better be a part of it because they already are. And we cannot, we will not move forward unless we move to their rhythm too. Now, I, I, I didn't tell you to sit down. I'm still the chairman up here, just, just chill. Now, to those of you who are standing, as chairman of the Republican National Committee, I hereby give you permission to no longer have to ask for permission to be involved. This is not your mama's and your daddy's party anymore, it is yours. <laughs> 